What's going on everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com and in the last Dynasty video we went through our Season 4 offseason. We just came fresh off a national title win, our first one in the Dynasty. We went into the offseason, we done some heavy recruiting, we ended up with the number one recruiting class in the country, we done position changes and we didn't have to cut any players, we done a good job with our numbers and today we're doing some preseason stuff for Season 5. The 2009 season, you see here on the cover of the preview magazine, Big Matt Ellis, our All-American fullback. Well, he's an All-American in my heart. Either way, we're really excited about kicking off Season 5. But before we do that, we got to get some preseason stuff out of the way. So the first thing we're going to look at is preseason options, and let's talk about the schedule. I've already set it up. I like to have an A-plus schedule. And for this dynasty, I like to only schedule Power 5 non-conference opponents now the schedule looks kind of goofy we got two straight open dates the only reason why that is is because i wanted to have an 11 game schedule like everybody else in order for me to put a game there it would not open up any other week for me to put an open date so i got two straight open dates not a big deal we're going to start off the season though with the top five matchup against number four tennessee my beloved volunteers it's been a while since i played them uh they were like the only i wanted one top five um, non-conference matchup in here somewhere. This was the best option that I could find. So we're going to go up against Tennessee out of the gate. After that, we're going to take on Missouri. It's been a few years since I've played Missouri. I think it may have been two dynasties ago. I took them on and they destroyed me. I think they had like just a killer backfield. I have no clue what they got here, but I just saw them on the list and I'm like, okay, yeah, let's just go ahead and schedule them. We are going to play Notre Dame again. Last season, we played them, and it was a close game, so they, I'm going to reward them with a chance for them to beat us. We're going to go to Notre Dame this time. If you remember our other two non-conference opponents last season, we had, what was it, Nebraska, we destroyed them, and we had Ole Miss, and we destroyed them. So I didn't want to play them again. So we're going to kick off the season with three straight non-conference opponents, and then we're going to head into the conference schedule. Our first four is Washington State at home. USC at home, seventh in the country, at number 18, Oregon State, and then Stanford. Then we got a bye week, and then we got four more games at UCLA, 23, Oregon at home, number 19, Cal on the road, and then we finish our season, as always, with Arizona State, our arch rival. So it's going to be a fun schedule. I think I got six ranked games, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, six out of the 11 are ranked games. I always like to have six home and five away. Let's talk about redshirting players. This is the first time you can uh, see a bit of, of the roster outside of the, what we talked about in the previous video. But let's just talk about redshirting specifically. Here's what I'm going to do at quarterback. Andy Williams and true freshman Marcus Collins are going to split duties. We're going to have an old Steve Spurrier two-back system, more or less. Last year, we kind of had that, but 85% of it was Paul Rhodes and 15% was Burks. Well, we're going to make that a little more even because all three of these guys look like they are about the exact same. We're going to redshirt more because I want to try to use Collins' speed to the best of my ability. Yes, 68 is slow, but it's not super slow. I think I can get by with that, run a little bit of option, do a little bit of that trio offset stuff. I still want to keep that intact. I thought that was a nice little wrinkle to the offense. Otherwise, Williams is going to be our pocket passer. He is, if you look at their arms, you look at there, if I can get to it, did I pass it up? And maybe I did. There we go. Throw on power, 89, 87, 89. So they're all about the same. But his accuracy is really, really, really good. All three of these guys got good accuracy. All three got good arms. But Williams has got a special accurate arm. I want to use that along with Collins's legs of some sort. So we're going to have a bit of a two-quarterback system, so we're going to redshirt more. When it comes to halfback, very simple on the redshirting front. We're going to redshirt the two freshmen. We got three guys ahead of them that are better than those two. Very easy decision. Fullback, Ellis. We, we got Kent. We're going to redshirt the freshman because we got a perfect scenario. We got the fullback, Miranda Sr. Behind Ellis, once he's gone, Kent can back up Ellis. Just a good setup. Wide receiver, we can't redshirt anybody here, so there's nothing you can do. You go to tight end. I could have redshirted Hunter, the big five-star tight end, but we are not going to do that. What we are going to do is we're going to start that dude along with Smith. We're going to do a lot of two tight end type stuff this year just because we got the bodies for it now. 
Really excited to see what we could do there. Tackle, very easy decision. We only had one redshirt opportunity, and it was a freshman. He's the worst of the bunch. So that was a very simple thing to do, just redshirt him. Guard, this looks kind of weird. We're going to redshirt all three of these freshman guards. Now, you notice we got five guys, technically six if you count this one, I guess, that are all pretty similar to each other. Now, some may think, hey, just play the true freshman. No, I want to play guys who are smart and are just as strong and that type of thing. And I got to think long term as well. We're going to redshirt those three. Now, normally I like to have four active guys per position. So for guard, I like to have four active guards. But if, you, if I'm doing it this way, I only have three. Romero, Ostrom, and Buchanan. That is because we are going to move one of these centers over to guard. Because we got two really good centers, and we like to have both of them on the field. And one of them is going to be a really good guard for us, and we're going to look at that at the depth chart screen. As you can see here, we can't redshirt any center. Defensive end, I could have redshirted our best defensive end, but who would do that? But we can't redshirt our two freshmen. We got guys that are better than them. We just don't need them this season. It's just a great situation to be in right here. Defensive tackle, I could have redshirted Jones. But I like to have four active at all times because defensive tackles tire easily in this game. So you're going to see all four of these guys from time to time. Okay, let's go to outside linebacker. We got one incredible one who can redshirt, but we're obviously not going to. And we got a bunch of dudes that all kind of look the same back here. Now, somebody made a good comment. And one thing I may try to do is when it comes to the depth chart and such, like one or two of these guys may get in a little bit more often than normal. I may use like formation subs. For example, like for the 4-4, four, four, I may have more in there instead of Livingston or something. Because these two guys right here are like spot on. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the depth chart. But I just kind of want to point that out. Middle linebacker, we can't redshirt anybody here, so we can move on. Corner, we're going to redshirt the two freshmen. Again, we just don't really need them this year. We got so many bodies, and we got three guys ahead of him. Now, yes, Jackson it looks just as good as Pears, but... I just don't need him to play. I mean, I normally just don't go any farther than nickel. I could play dime, and if I want to, I got Anderson right there. All three of these guys look exactly the same to me. You know, so we're going to do that. Again, I think long-term when it comes to this redshirting stuff because these guys are eventually going to leave. As you see here, Deloach, he's a senior. This is his last year. You better believe there's a very good chance Jackson will be a starter next season. We're going to save a year if we do this. Free safety, nobody to redshirt. Strong safety. We got our third stringer right here, a freshman. We could redshirt him. He is definitely a future starter for us, probably in two seasons when Claret leaves. Kicker, nobody to redshirt here. We only got the one, but we do got a good situation, a punter. We got a senior starter, and we got a true freshman who's going to be excellent for us, but we don't need him this season, so we are going to redshirt him. So that is it for redshirting. I'm going to go over to rosters. And let's talk about depth chart. I've already kind of touched on this in the red shirting section, so I'll try to make this quick. Williams is going to quote unquote get the start, but Collins is going to get his sub packages or his formations that are going to be just dedicated to him. Again, because of that speed, hopefully we can make use of that. Halfback, it's going to be the Xavier Smith show. He's just so much better than the rest of them. But I think I'm going to give Tyler and Parker. You can see those are the other two that are just decent. Larson Hill never touched the field. Tyler and Parker are a little bit different. Tyler's a speedster. Parker's the stronger dude. I may give like one formation to Tyler, one to Parker, and the rest to Smith, something of that sort, without having me to use sub packages 100 times over throughout the season. Fullback, very simple. Ellis and Miranda. Wide receiver, this is interesting. Here's the rub. We got Mike Thomas. Normally, if I have an impact wide receiver, I put him at my number one spot, which is the X receiver. But Thomas is a little bitty feller. I don't think he can handle being on the outside too well. I could be wrong, but I think he works better as a slot receiver, and that's what we're going to do. Now, I have him at the number two spot because we got some wide receiver option stuff I'm going to do. So if you think about the formation I-Twins, well, that Z receiver is technically a slot receiver, and he's the guy who can go into motion and do some wide receiver option uh, concepts and that's what I'm thinking about doing there now once we get to the three and four wide stuff that's when I'm gonna have to use some formation subs and put him truly in the slot I'm gonna handle all of that in the next video otherwise we got Oliver 
Then we got, it kind of goes downhill after that, Horn and Walker. As you can see, wide receiver is kind of a need for us in recruiting. You go to tight end. I am going to have Hunter. I'm going to do it now. We're going to put Hunter at the number one spot over Smith because Hunter is so tall. He's 6'8". And I, I need to look at his jump. Let's just go ahead and look at that while we're here. His jump isn't as good as Smith. That's that's actually a really good jump for that kid right there. Either way, I'm going to have Hunter start. But both of these guys are going to play quite a bit. We'll just see how that goes. But the big thing is, I'm going to have a handful of pass plays where I want this guy going on go routes. i got to take advantage of this height right here. And the best way to do that is go routes, cover zero type stuff. So what we're going to do is do some of that. We're, it's just easier for me to put him at the number one spot. And we're going to have Smith back him up. But I still may use a formation sub here and there to switch these guys around. Okay. Tackle, left tackle, McCoy, then Smith. I got McCoy over Smith because I think of his awareness a little bit better. You go to left guard. This is our, technically our best center is Curly. You go over here, if you look at the overall, Curly is our best center. But Jackson started for us last year because... He's got the better awareness. I'm a big believer in that awareness affects high snaps. The higher the awareness, the less high snaps you're going to have while you're in the shotgun. So Jackson is still going to be our starter or center, which means I'm going to take our 91 overall curly center. We're going to move him over, and he could be an 85 overall guard. And he's still way better than any other guard that we got. So we're going to have Ostrom behind him. Of course, Jackson's going to start at center. Then he got right guard. Our, technically, our best guard is going to be Romero. And he's going to be over Buchanan. Now, in this situation, we got an 80 and a 78 overall. I got Romero because all I care about with guards is being super strong and can run block. He's stronger. And if you go over here, his run block is way better than Buchanan's. Plus, he's just humongous. 361 pounds. Incredible. Right tackle, our best offensive lineman, Big J.R. Wesley. Really excited to have him. He's got two more years left in him. Hopefully, he'll stay. Defensive end, pretty simple, Long and Shelton. And this is going to be another situation. I may do some formation sub stuff to get Shelton in there a time or two more. Thankfully, defensive ends tire very easily in this game. So these backup defensive ends get a lot more playing time than you think. Same situation here. I'm going to have Johnson over Ingram because he's much stronger. My right defensive end technically does more run stuffing stuff than get sacks like Long does. So I technically put my faster defensive ends at left and my bigger ones on the right side. Defensive tackle, Wilson, Burton, Johnson, pretty self-explanatory there. It doesn't really matter who you got one or two. Both of these guys are going to be on the field all the time anyways. You go to outside linebacker, very simple. Vickers, middle linebacker, very simple. McCovey, then Hall. And so it's, uh, I put Hall over Adams just because he's a little bit faster, and he's the future starting middle linebacker for us, I think. So I want him to get a little bit of playing time out there. Right outside linebacker, this was a tough one. Moore or Livingston, I went with Moore. Because he's a little bit smarter. And I think he had better tackle rating. Is that correct? It wasn't tackle. What was it? Speed? Uh, speed? Uh, strength? I was, uh, maybe it's just the awareness is the reason why I went with him. Which I'm okay with. Either way, they look like the exact same. You go to corner. The load singleton pairs. Nothing changed from last year. Free safety. I'm going to go Bryce Thompson over Prince. Yes, Prince has the better overall. But I have to have speed at free safety. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And Thompson is the faster dude over Prince. Now, his awareness isn't as good, but I'm hoping with enough reps, he will get that up to right there the match with Prince, and then it's obvious he just needs to be our starter. Unless he just plays terrible all season, Thompson will be our starter throughout. You go to strong safety, very simple here. Clarets are starter, and you got McDonald. Kicker, simple. Punter, simple. Then we got our kick and punt return. Normally what I like to do, I like to have offensive guys over here because they can catch the ball a little bit better, but of course you want the fastest dudes. Now you go here and you sort by speed. Yes, our fastest dude is the Loach. I could put him there, and his speed is actually, or his catch is actually not bad. But he's a starter. Um, you know, one thing I can try to do, I don't want to lose him. I like to have backups as my kick and punt return. That's the other reason why I've done that. So we got a backup Oliver right there. Uh, just because his speed is good. I think he had a pretty good agility. Then we're going to have Mike Tyler right there, and then Marks, and I'm okay with that. Then you go to punt return. It's going to be the same thing. And the reason why I got Oliver over Tyler is because his catch rating is way better. I don't want any drop, you know, fumbles and stuff like that. And we'll go to kickoff starter, punter. Simple. He's just the better of the two. And then long snapper. I always like to have a backup center there. All right. 
So let's go to rosters. If I can get to it. It takes forever to get there. A super slow menu. Let's, there we go. How about that? All right. We go to all rosters. I always like to look at our team captains. Defensive captain is going to be Adrian McCovey, your starting middle linebacker. And I put Thomas as our offensive captain. I think he's going to make a bunch of plays for us this year. Program standards. We can quickly look at this. We got our bar down pretty low. I'd like to get it down to nothing. We just need to get some guys in trouble. Hopefully back, a couple backups this year will get in trouble when we can really over punish them and get that bar down to zilch. Okay, next up I want to look at is the recruiting or the uh, Athlon Sports, the preview magazine. Again, Big Matt Ellis is on the cover. Hopefully we'll be on many covers this year. We'll click on that. Preseason polls. Arizona, number one. As they should be, we got a lot of good talent. A minus overall. If you go over here and you sort, we got, there are other teams that got more talent than we do, but there's not many. We got an A minus overall. But we got B offense. That's mainly because our quarterback situation isn't the best in the world. But our defense looks really strong. By the way, they got us number one in the country. You got Oklahoma, Florida State, Tennessee, Texas, Florida, USC, Michigan, Miami, and Virginia Tech on all a who's who of around that time period, except for us, of course. If you go to Heisman Watch, we do not have anybody on this list. I'm hoping we could get somebody on there. It would be kind of tough. Maybe Xavier Smith if we really run the ball with him hard. Thomas, maybe, I, I don't know, just something for me to think about. But maybe we can get uh, have some interest on this Heisman watch list. Let's look at preseason All-Americans. First-teamers, do we have anybody on here? I'm just looking at what we have. No first-teamers. What about second team? There we go. J.R. Wesley, second team All-American. Hopefully he'll get on the first team by the end of the year. And let's look at the All-Conference just for us. I'm not going to look at the other team, other conferences. But look at the Pac-10. We got our center, Dan Jackson. Good to see him on that list. And we got Wesley. And then we got Big Tony Long. Good to see him on that list as well. And that is it. What about second team? I don't see anybody. So it looks like we only got three all-conference players. I'm pretty sure that's going to change by the end of the year. Conference outlook. We'll check here. They have us number one in the conference. Then USC, Oregon State, Cal, Oregon, so on and so forth. That is what we expected. These same three or four teams have been up at the top all dynasty, USC, Oregon State, and then Cal. Toughest places to play. We're not going to be on this list. I'm pretty much guarantee it. It's so hard to get your team on this list if they're not already on there. You got to win a bunch of home games, pretty much. All right. So all we got left is recruiting. But here's what we're going to do. I'm actually not going to do any in-season recruiting. And here's why. We got 59 players coming back next year as long as nobody leaves early, transfers out, whatever. That means we only got 11 spots to fill. Well, off-season recruiting is way more fun than in-season recruiting, and I enjoy off-season recruiting. I'm not going to get two or three commitments in the regular season and then only go after seven guys in the off-season. That's just goofy to me. I would rather wait to the offseason and do nothing but recruiting. Now, as you can see here, we need a little help at wide receiver and middle linebacker. I think we should have no problem getting those players in the offseason. We'll see what happens there. But I'm not going to do any in-season recruiting. I just don't think it's worth it. I want to have more fun again in the offseason. So we're going to bypass every bit of this. So what we're going to do now is go to play week. And we're going to go straight to Tennessee. And I will go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and simulate all of this. I'll let you see this live it won't take too long the week two is going to have a lot of games but we can look at some of the scores here as soon as this uh, simulates but again i hope you're gonna agree with me on this one i just i don't think it's worth doing in season recruiting it's just not as fun as off season i want to go after more bodies plus there are usually a whole lot better talent in off season than there are in season so here we are looks like we got somebody in trouble for the tennessee game let's see what happens here we got two pl oh geez we got two. Oh, wow. So Thomas is in trouble. Michael Thomas, what did he do? It's come to my attention that Thomas was late to our last team meeting. It's a minor offense, but let's ensure they won't be late again. So if I don't do anything, that bar didn't go up a much of nothing. I may do, uh, let's do two quarters for him. We need him for the Tennessee game. So what did McCovey do? It is a well documented that McCovey has numerous cases of academic dishonesty, and he's got B-discipline. That just shows you it's all random. 
Uh, let's pull the cord on this guy before anything else happens. Jeez. Uh, we got bodies at middle linebacker. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do just like one game for now. So he's going to miss the Tennessee game. So just like that, we're at two of our best players. Interesting. So I'm going to back out of here. We're not going to do that. So what we are going to do is look at the week one games. I always like to go over this stuff. I'm going to do the top 25, though. So you got Maryland winning, Ohio State, and Iowa. Then you go over to week two. This was our another open date. We got West Virginia over Virginia Tech, Purdue, Tennessee, Texas A&M wins. Then you got NC State over Auburn. Ole Miss won. Texas Tech, Florida State won. Then you got Georgia, Miami. Then you got Maryland over Cal. Michigan over MTSU. Then you have Iowa, Florida, and then Penn State. So they were like an, an upset or two, but not really. All right. Tennessee. This is what we got coming up. So our best offensive player is not going to play. That's going to change. Well, he's going he's to miss the first half. We're also missing our top middle linebackers. So if you go, I'll just go ahead and look at this now. We got time to do it. Let's go to rosters. If you go to our linebacker position, middle linebacker specifically, it's a bit of a drop off that he's out, but I had to punish him somehow. So we punished him for a game. And so it looks like we're going to have a, uh, I think Hall's going to be our starter at middle linebacker. But we may move a middle, an outside linebacker over there or something. We'll figure that out. But he comes to wide receiver. Things got weird real quick. Thomas is out. Now it's a really big drop off at tight end. So that means that means the tight ends are going to have to step up. Our halfback's going to have to step up. It should be interesting. So again, what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to obviously play Tennessee, but we're going to do a little scouting before the game. I'm going to do that on my own time, so I know, I know what to expect. But Tennessee, going to be a tough matchup. they got a lot of talent. They run a pro-style offense, 4-3 defense, pretty much like what we do. It looks like they won their first game. looks like they played really good defense. Offensively, not so much, but none of this really matters. It's still very early in the season, but it should be a whole lot of fun, and hopefully we can start off the season with a victory. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.